G'day, it's Robbie Regain. Well, this is just a short video to give you the final wrap up on the the base I made for the shell I metal lathe. Uh, in the previous videos, you would have seen it's made out of heavy pine, really old salvage timber. It's got an alum, a uh, steel angle uh, strip on the front for mag bases, which works really good. And I'm quite happy with the whole thing. The proportions are good. It's good and heavy stable. The only contentious issue was what to do about handles, you know, I mean this is quite quite weighty, I mean the whole thing weighs 11 kilograms, I uh, weighed it on the bathroom scales, so what's that 20 odd pound, you know, and I was worried about lifting it, you know, um, I wouldn't want to drop it, but I want to, put, you know, really portable so I can just put it on the back seat of the car if I want to take it somewhere, up the brother and rules or somewhere. So I had suggestions on, you know, routing the ends to get your fingers under. It wasn't a bad idea, but I hadn't got a router quite that big, so I left that one go. And then I was going to use angle plates, just put angle iron on the end and lift it with that, which isn't a bad idea. That was my original concept. But the problem with that is that you're putting all your weight, that whole 10 kilos, on just on your fingertips, you know. I mean, if you're lifting it and, it, it, you know, it's a lot of load on your fingers and if it slipped, well, you'd drop the thing on the floor and it'd be catastrophic. So I decided, no, that's really the whole lift it with your fingertips thing, I think, is bad news. So what I've done is I've used some of these. And these are those lift up handles you get uh, for toolboxes. I bought a, a box of these years ago for peanuts, got them at a garage sale. And I've been putting them on, on my toolboxes, you know, and uh, particularly ones where they just have the handle on the top and nothing on each end, so I've been putting these on each end. So I thought, this is really what you want, but they look as ugly as all hell, and they're too, way too deep, so I'll show you what I've done. Okay, you can see here where I've fitted them, and what I've done is I've cut them down from the original show up. Oh, yep. Yeah. I've cut them down from the original proportions to just a nice neat little bit that goes uh, that goes on quite good. So you can see there what I've done. And overall I think it's it's turned out quite neat. It also gives you a good lifting capability, you can get a good grip on it. I did wonder about having them going the other way, in which case where if you flip them, you could then lower the centre of gravity in relationship to the handles, but then your hands up here and you could swing in and hit the end of the lathe. If I made the timber longer, you could flip these and that would actually probably be better. But as it is, uh, this works quite good. I'll, I'll give you the lifting demo. Here we go. And that works. That works bloody good. These are really good, and you know that's dirt simple. It's held on by four screws, so yeah. I mean that's a pretty heavy little jigger, you know, and uh, it's quite controllable, you know. You can, but it's, it's certainly way better to go that way than with just on your fingertips. I think that would be very, <laughs> very dangerous, and you know, uh, I'm quite happy with it. I think it looks pretty neat. So there you go, um, job done. That's it. Finish. I'm not going to put a backboard or anything on it because it's just not worth it. These, uh, yeah, I think that's good. And when it's running, they don't rattle. I was a bit worried, thought, oh, maybe they'll rattle. I'll start it up and give you a, give you a listen. Right. To any Sherline owners or ex Sherline owners, how does that sound noise wise? I mean, do you think that is normal? I mean, this lathe's actually fairly noisy, I think, for its size. It's, it's noisier than my big lathe, really. Um, see, there's some sort of movement there. I don't know whether it's coming from the motor or the headstock. The bearings in this are sealed, you know, you can't lubricate them and it's supposed to be you know, sealed for life. 
I turned it over without the belt on and it all felt smooth and good and there was no grittiness. There's no movement in any direction. So, yeah, I'd be interested to get feedback on, on, on this from other people that have had these. Do you think that sounds right? Now, uh, I know you're all itching to see this thing cut something, but look, there's really no point in doing it uh, until it's all up to scratch. I mean, I cut this test piece on it and I found there's a, an alignment issue. And I found afterwards why, because the, the rotating headstock was actually loose. Uh, you could move it, you know. I tightened it up, but I haven't aligned it, so that's got to be done before I really do any serious turning on this thing. So that's it for now. Job complete here. Uh, down the track there'll be some more videos on this. Um, primarily to do with alignment. And I'll look at the technical aspect of this thing as well. And uh, yeah, so hopefully um, you like looking at shear lines. <laughs> Alright, well that's it for me. I hope you got something out of this found interesting and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.